what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hello, fellow tribes. This is Catching Fire 3 with some more uh, hooked on you, Dead Red Daylight Dating Simulator. We're back where we left off, and this is made after the one before this. You know, you know how I do. Before you know what's going on, Hundreds is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air, a devilish twinkle in her half mask covered eye. Okay. Oh, there we go. Might I suggest something a little naughty? And let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Great idea. Trickster, isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who gets to make the rules, so I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. Hey, well, hello. And who is this new fan in the waiting? Beat it, hack! I don't know. What's the arm inviting one more person to join the circle for our game? Oh, I can't say. I was just saying it's a great idea while also teasing the secret trickster ending. What? I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. Toodaloo. The rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap. Spit, that is. Oh, God. Kiss. Duh. But let's be clear. This ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye. Real romantic light. Yes, romance is the goal. So we'll all be waiting here in complete silence, trying to listen in and use our imaginations while you make out on the other side of the bar, but not watching. Like a toast, romantic, well-adjusted adults. Scott, you're up. You grip the bottle in your hand and put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Many games consist of two parts: on top a pointer, which ro rotates in a clockwise direction, and the bottom of a target. You're going. Oh my God! I get this one. This is the. Th this is the fucking thing that they do in the actual Dead by Daylight game. I know this. I'm pretty good at it. This here upcoming mini game is a special mini game, perfect for the less coordinated because there's no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that's a bit like losing. But no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play, or would you like me to repeat that? Ready, ready. Away we go. Spit in the bottle and see who you're gonna smooch. Oh, you got Trapper, you two are meant to be. Psych, you have to actually spin multiple times to get your real result. First, to get to three times is your true match. That's how we play hardcore spin the bottle on this here island. Now get your spin on. I'm actually gonna... Oh, man. You got Wraith. I got Wraith again. You got Spirit. I got Trapper. I, I got Huntress. I got Chopper. Chopper is your true match. Great job. Ooh, yeah, you see that? Just this morning you were waking up on strange beach surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. Now you're looking across the beach tower at Chopper. Lust in his eyes, sweat glistening on his skin. I don't like this. I mean, I like the game. The game is great. Your heart races. You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Trapper takes you by the hand and you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. He begins to reach for you, putting his hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but not in the sexy way he is. You're sweating in the gross way you'd sweat at the interview for a job you're not even remotely qualified for. Nice. You don't know what to do. If you try and lock lips in this state, you might gross him out so completely that he'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Trapper, I, you, we... Save it, it's not happening! Don't cry, I... I know to get this close to a living god and then feel a sting of his rejection, it must hurt bad. But don't take it personally. Well, well do, but use it to make yourself stronger. It's not because I don't want to, it's because you haven't earned it yet. You might later. For now, it can't be that easy. Sure, maybe with one of the others, they're weak, sad, lonely, not me. I don't need this. It's mine to give or to withhold. You really dodged the bullet. This means you'll have a chance to present yourself in a bit more flattering of a light later, assuming you survive. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I think you're cute. I would make out with you so hard your heart would cave in if I wanted to, and I do, but I still won't. Tell anyone I told you this and you die. They die and then I have you all revived and kill you again. If anyone asks, I was the best you ever had, which I might just be another time. I did break up such a passionate moment that we only assume was passionate because we'd never spy on you constantly while you stay on silent. But dinner is being served right away and we miss it. must insist that you join us. Insist? Did I say insist? I think I did. We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation. 
<laughs> when there are so many interesting things to die from. Uh, that's rude. They're not things, okay? Seems like the next activity is mealtime? How quaint. You're expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And, oh, great. Terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. To start, no one runs to sit next, sit next to Chopper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Fuck you, Trickster. Oh yeah, Trickster is here. Surprise? Yeah, well, they don't call him it. Expected, sir. Got it. Uh, expected, stir. That's stupid. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole shtick gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good, Scott. Real good. And we literally can't let hundreds and trappers sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit by, side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on the screen at the same time. Oh my god, you can't. Oh, poor Wraith. Look at him. We can't even fit everyone on the screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Poor Wraith. Uh, let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Hundreds and Chopper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 overs, uh, hours over a hit. Uh, spit! Oh my god, I can't think. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, fuck, burps. Hey, you didn't actually tell us. Oh, hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat, seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My, my favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Which you'd know, considering what you've been up to. Who are you get to get judgy now? I'm, I'm just, I'm just sharing facts, and you need to murder something to eat as meat. So that's like technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Scott, you thinking what I'm thinking? It's going to be prison on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know. When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric. Uh-oh. I, I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours, and we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Wow, he's right for a change, because I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras, which is kind of true. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. <laughs> no blood. Ah. Uh, you, you two in your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Ovs. The hell is it? Uh, the hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop, please. I hate it when we fight. Or talk. Or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azarov. Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Hey, Scott, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I, I mean dinner. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. That's a lot of hours. What is that? Three day. Hold on. How long is 72 hours? Three days, right? Yeah, I was right. Holy shit. I was right without even having to look it up. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value in maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up... Ugh. Dinner. Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated it when it got cold. 
Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Many games consist of two parts on top, okay. On the bottom of a target, okay. Sometimes the target is immediately visible, sometimes it's hidden under the, until the point arrives. Press the space bar. Ooh, here it is. Here it is. Here's... Ooh, here it is. He, this is what they do on uh, the actual... Oh yeah, I already... S I said that last time, but this is what they actually do, I think. To achieve a perfect success, land on the start of the target, not the end. Okay, got it. Okay, ready to play, or would you like me to repeat that? I played the actual game, so I know how to do this. Slice. Fuck. Not bad. There we go. Perfect. Shit. Did I get a per- Not bad. Shit. Yes. Perfect. That was pretty good. I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is finally served. <laughs> For real. The sounds especially coming from the masked killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean, come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Ha! Spear, why aren't you hungry? <laughs> the two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Scott. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating? They don't like that. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? Wow, you ever see a seagull that big? I haven't. That's incredible. Anyway, what were we talking about? Lame Mr. Act. He, yeah, she's right, Scott. Pretty lame. Own who you are and never compromise. Do you wash up on this island with no memory of who you are and how you got here? <clears throat> yes, you did, poor thing. He, you have no idea the last time you ate a real meal. You've been standing in the sun. But, but the seagull. Oh, he's made a lot of good points. I swear. You're beginning to feel lightheaded. It waved at it waved at me. Maybe you need to eat to survive here. Either that or someone poisoned you. No, wait, you haven't eaten, so you can't be poisoned. Hmm, whatever the answer, you're clearly about to pass out. Oh hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and god, narrator to the narrator, the ocean. I'm not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here and I might be the only one who can help you out now. There's only one thing you must do to survive, you have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were, am I right? For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that, and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I like, some of them I did not. It's in your best interest to make more choices than I like. For the choices might be yours to make, but they're mine to reward. Ooh. You wake up to find hundreds holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cold water into your mouth. Oh, good, you're awake. Sometimes when I try to and take care for people, they have a way of ending up less alive than when I started. Which would be a total bummer if, if that happened to you. It's been so long since I had a normal, help, happy, healthy living person around. Usually I'm just falling into the same old routine of smashing everyone's heads open with a hatchet before I really get to know who they are as a person. 
But you, you're not nearly scared or too busy writhing in pain to see me for me. You feel nervous in her arms, not just because they're maybe crushing you a little bit, but because she's beautiful. Yes, beautiful, but I was just going to narrate that fact, not, you know, say it out loud as a single word like some creep. Beautiful mask, your bunny mask, it's quite gorgeous. Nice recovery, but now that you're awake and talking, you got to keep this up. Did you make it yourself? You're the first person to ever ask me that. Yes, I did. You seem so quirky and cool. You could do anything. Own an Etsy store. Of course, Etsy store. Why not? Be a doctor. Why is it that you kill people? Hundred size. You can practically see the memories flickering across her eyes, but she hasn't tried to kill you yet, so that's a good sign. It's all I was ever taught to do as a young girl, so I thought it was right. Even through the mask, you can see that Huntress is blushing a bit. It seems like your line of questioning has made her a little nervous. Hey, you didn't eat much at dinner. Want a snack? She offers you some jerky, probably human jerky, but her spice game is on point because this smells pretty damn good. Except, duh. When on Murderer's Island, you might as well eat as the killers do. Plus, you really are hungry and you can chow down on jerky essentially, right? I'd love some. After a moment of quiet chewing on what you choose to believe is not human thigh meat, you decide to be bold and ask another question. Have you ever been in a, re a relationship before? Dang, you're really going there. You do not play around, Scott. I, um, hmm. Hun just takes a moment to think deeply before answering. I must say, it's quite amusing to see this hulking bombshell get all twisted with these impersonal questions. Kudos to you, Scott. There was this one deer that looked at me quite provocatively in a clearing once, but that doesn't count, does it? You hear the faintest giggles bubble out from behind Hun Jis's mask. Sorry, I, I got caught up, you know. <laughs> You're so cute, Huntress. No, it doesn't count. Whoa, what's this? You found something in the sand. Huntress reaches down to pick it up. It's a half clip. A hair clip, sorry. Probably left by some little girl who was playing on the beach long ago who's definitely still alive and not at all dead. Huntress closes the bag of jerky with the hair clip. Seems like she's a little mixed up on how exactly this particular item works. Should you go with the flow or show off some of your knowledge of an advanced humaning? You silly goose. You chuckle before reaching for the bag of jerky. You take the barret off and collect a lock of Huntress's hair, clipping it back into an attractive swoop. Much better. Oh, that's cute. Huntress is so happy that you taught her something new about human trinkets, she touches the clip in her hair with a shy smile. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find that it's White and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which are waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt, flirt points was not a part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted in for after campfire stories. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I what? No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's not that's scheduled after what comes after. The f what the fuck? Oh, I love this game. Oh, I'm gonna complete this game. Holy shit. Well, of course, I, for you, do. Go, go, go! No, go, go. Ah, oh, I forgot one of the goes. Once everyone was gathered at the fire pit, uh, Dwight and Claudette quickly made an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on time for evening events. We'll only have time for one person to share the special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this step up now, I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. S -s -s Sorry, everyone, I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I logged struck a time while I was passed out. Oh, which one's Wraith? Oh, this one's Wraith, that's right. I've <laughs> been there before. Even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is an absolute dream come true, is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anyone here ever happened on schedule even once? Anything here ever? Okay. Damn it, Donald, if you... Who the fuck is Donald? Damn it, Donald, if you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick, and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and muss are back on. You two know I love the hack slash and slice. 
We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anywhere? Call me nobody. Ha! It changed. It fucking changed. It's amazing. But we still got to get started on story time. So, Scott, who do you think should go? Ah, oh, damn it. That's a name. Ha! Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Um, well, I like this one, but we haven't heard much from Wraith. I choose you, Wraith. Whoa, whoa, this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will, I, will ya? Wait, what's the thing that happened? I'm not really one for scary stories. Life is scary enough as it is. He literally carrying around a skull and a spine as your little prop. As the other killers laugh, Wraith, hold, Wraith holds up his skull and gazes into its hollow, dark eye sockets. If you're looking for something Shakespearean in the story, look elsewhere. This is a tale of madness, of staring at the soul of death and never returning. Once upon a time, a young man worked at a junkyard. The man was quiet, kept to himself, just wanted to avoid trouble. While the boss dealt with clients, the young man operated the crusher, turning old cars into cubes of twisted metal. One day, right before crushing the car, he noticed something. Blood. Drip, drip, dripping. From the trunk. He opened it and found a frightened stranger bound and gagged. The young man reeled. Was he about to accidentally murder the stranger? How could this have happened? He freed the stranger who ran off. Into the waiting arms of the boss, the owner of the junkyard. Before his shaken employees could tell him about the mistake they had nearly made, the boss took out a knife and swiftly slit the stranger's throat. Holy shit. The young man fell to his knees, unable to comprehend what was happening. As he stared at the ground, too shocked to cry, the boss approached him. What did you do? He asked the boss. I did your job for you. What do you mean? That's not my job. My job is to crush the cars. The boss let out a miserable scoff, his face contorting an evil disdain for the pathetic wretch in front of him. Why do you think we're tr crushing these cars? To save space, who do you think my clients are? Uh, I don't know, mumbled the young man. Yes, you do, screamed the, screamed the boss. Deep down, you've always known what's happening here. You just didn't want to admit it to yourself. Your hands aren't clean. My clients give me money, and I can't take care of their problems. Eliminate their witnesses, tie up their loose ends, or actually, you do. No, no, the young man whimpered as the boss towered above him. Yes. You're nothing more than an executioner, and you've reaped hundreds of souls. The young man's body shook with soft spasms as he tried to stop crying. It was when the it was when the boss started laughing that it happened. Something in the young man changed. He stood up, now taller than the boss. A faint glimmer of fear overtook the snarl of the older man's face. The young man's face was empty. I I'm guessing that's the that's this guy's story. Empty as he grabbed the boss's throat and dragged him to the car in the crusher. Empty as he picked up the boss and stuffed him inside. Empty as he slammed the trunk down on him, his stupid f fat head sticking out begging for mercy. Empty as he started the machine staring at the boss in a sniveling, crying wet face. Empty as he grabbed the boss's head, dug his fingers in further, piercing the skin. Empty as he squeezed and pulled. Empty as he heard bones popping and snapping. But when the boss's head still touched his spine, pulled cleanly out of its disgusting sack of a body, he smiled. Ray stares back into the eye sockets of his skull. It doesn't matter how good you are, how innocent, how kind, how full of love you once were. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. I am being... Okay. An awkward silence falls upon the room until... A few seconds. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. My god, that is brilliant. I'm glad you didn't give us any Shakespeare, because that story made Shakespeare look like a slack-jawed, mouth-breathing idiot. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just too overcome. As you sit down, the other killers look at each other, unsure if you're joking. Ah, thanks. Wraith on the other hand is absolutely sure you're joking. You may have gone a little overboard. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my god, I didn't realize what time it was. Uh, or how long I've been recording. So, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below if you want to see more, or what you want me to do next. Subscribe if you're new, and may the odds be ever in your favor.